alone. We acknowledge your name. We said you are worthy. Worthy to be praised. Worthy to be adored. Makando la bakoli ala bashira. Eli ala bakando la bakoli ala bashira. Ali ala bakayaba. Bless the very name of the Lord. Bless the very name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We honor your name, Lord. We magnify your name, Lord. We glorify your name, Lord. We said how excellent. How dependable is your name this morning? Blessed be your name. We honor you. We love you. We honor you. We love you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. It is good to be alive. We should never take anything for granted. There are people that at 7 o'clock this morning, they are alive. Now they are gone. Amen. So just thank the Lord. It is not because you know how to do anything or you plan that you'll be here this morning. There are people that are saying, I'm going to church. They will not make it this morning. But you are here to give him praise. We are just here to praise him for his mercy, for his kindness. Come on, open your mouth and just worship the Lord. Give him praise. Acknowledge his name. He's a good God, a great God, the mighty Father, the wonderful God. We bless your name this morning. We honor your name. We acknowledge you as our Lord, as our King, as our Savior. I want you to sing a song, a song, any song that comes into your heart to praise the Lord this morning. Just sing a song and worship him with your own song this morning. Makali my Lord and my Savior, I worship you this morning. I will honor your name for all that you have done, for all that you are doing, for all that you continue to do, for your shield, for your protection, for your mercy, O Lord. Imagine me, Lord. Father, I bless you this morning. We bless your name, we bless your name. We worship you. We honor you. We give you praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration. 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 We bless you. We worship you. We honor you. We give you praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration. Almighty God. We bless your holy and mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. talking about the the there are nine gifts amen can anybody name the nine gifts of their head without looking okay what are the gifts that comes through the mouth tongues uh-huh an interpretation of tongue amen everybody got it now from the mouth amen the the the, the three gifts that comes through your mouth are huh? The one that comes through here. Amen. If you just remember it like that, the one that comes through your head here, through your brain, are wisdom, knowledge, and discernment. Amen. Who are the gifts for? Amen. It's for all believers. It's not just for pastors or for God can use anybody. Amen. God can use anybody that makes themselves available. Amen? And all the nine gifts are for everybody. And as believers, you, you can even operate, I will show you in the scriptures, 
how one man operated with the nine gift. God can give you the whole nine. So don't just say, I speak in tongues. That's only one. You need to grab more. Amen? And if you grab more, God will give it to you just to edify his kingdom, to enlarge his church. Amen? Hallelujah. Is to expand the kingdom of God. Amen? Now, tonight, today we are talking about the last three gifts. The last three gifts are the gift of power. Amen? Power. The gift that operates in power. Everybody can operate in power. Amen? In an instance. is a gift that just comes in an instance. It will do what God can pass it through you. In an instant, it will do what he wants to do and it will leave. Amen? And anybody as a believer, God can channel that gift through you. You just need to receive the anointing for it. Amen? It's almost like you are a door. If you shut yourself up, the wind cannot blow through the door. But if you open yourself up, the wind can blow through. And the more you allow the door to be open, the more the Lord can be blowing that gift through you. Amen. So the gift of power, the gift of power, number one out of this gift is faith. Faith, the gift of faith. I will explain because faith is divided into two parts. But the gift of faith, the second of the gift of power is the gift of healing. And the third of the gift of power is the gift of miracles. Amen? And as you are seated here today, you have experienced all those gifts. You might not understand that you have experienced it, but when I explain it, you will know that God himself has done, the gift has already been worked through you as a believer. But it's just for you to, to develop more into that gift. Amen. So let's start with the gift of faith. Amen. Hallelujah. The gift of faith. The gift of faith is different from, amen, measure of faith. A measure of faith. The gift of faith is divided into two. Number one is the gift itself and a measure of faith. Now I'll explain it. A measure of faith is when you became a believer and you said, I'm giving myself to Jesus. And you, you pray by faith. We are here this morning. Amen. We are all in church this morning because we believe that if we pray to God, something will happen. You have faith. That is faith. You understand? We cannot see Jesus, but we believe. You understand? That Jesus is real. That is faith. Amen. When we read our Bible, we believe that something will happen. That God is real. That stays with you for the rest of your life. That is a measure of faith. Amen. And the measure of faith can develop. Are you with me? It can develop. As you walk closer with the Lord, the Lord will start showing you things. You start believing more. Amen. Remember when you first became a believer? When people are speaking in tongues, you don't even know what they are saying. You understand? Now you can flow, you can talk, you can do everything. Maybe you don't even know how to pray before. But you can pray, you understand? And you can believe that something will happen. That means that your faith is increasing. You understand? That is a measure of faith. You have faith in the Lord. You have faith in the impossible. You understand? Now, as you become a, get stronger to be a believer, you know that no power can hurt you. You understand? Maybe before, let me tell you something. Hmm. In measure of faith. When I was, I just started the ministry here. When I was back home, when my pastor is doing deliverance, you know, me, I'm just behind the pastor. When they are saying, cast out the devil, we, all we are just doing is, yes, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Yeah, that demon goes go. Uh -huh. That was it. But then, when I was by myself, amen, how the measure of faith developed. I think Sister Nana here knows the brother. He came to my house for prayer when we first started. Look at deliverance, Pastor. You know now, I don't have my uh, spiritual fathers who used to do it. And I didn't know there was going to be deliverance. We were just praying. And then the, the spirits in the brother started acting. And this brother is very tall. 
and he started manifesting on the floor. I jumped on my own sofa. I said, ah! I said, hey, this is trouble, though. Hey. I said, he's going to destroy the furniture. My husband is going to kill me. I don't know what to do at all. Because we were just praying and the Holy Spirit showed up. And the brother was manifesting on the floor. And I'm like, hey, hey, these demons are going to stay in my house. But you see, as time goes on, the Lord, the measure of faith in me developed. That now when I see a demon, I'm like, oh yeah, come forward. You just come. And then they will say, ah, no. I say, ah, come, come and be born by fire. That is a measure of faith. You understand? That is how, you know, every one of us here, the Lord has been working on us, developing us. Maybe some of the things that used to make us afraid, you understand? Maybe before, when you have a dream, all you will do is cry. But now you know that you will pray. You understand? So that is a measure of faith. But the gift of faith that we are talking about is completely different from that. A gift of faith is something that just comes in the middle of service or in the middle of where the children of God are gathered and the Holy Spirit is moving. You understand? And the Spirit of God is moving and you release your heart. I'm going to get it. You understand? And your heart is beating and you are saying, I'm going to get thy healing. This, and as you are praying, you are determined. You understand? You are determined to get something. And this is when miracles happen. You understand? When you release your faith completely, your whole heart, and it's only happening when the people are gathered, anywhere children of God are gathered, that spirit can come in. You understand? And when you release your heart, remember, Jesus always said, according to your faith, it will be done. You understand? And that is why many believers, they go to church, they just go, they don't receive anything because they don't release at the right time. You understand? You can pray by yourself in the house. It's not like praying together in the house of the Lord. You understand? Because that is when that gift will come in. And when that gift comes in and you are believing and you are saying, you know, like the woman with the issue of blood, when he saw Jesus, he just go for it. Boom! You understand? When you know the Holy Spirit is moving, when you said, and, and at that stage, you are not looking at anybody. You are just speaking in your heart. Lord, I know you can do it for me. That is the gift of faith. And you grab it and something will happen. Quick. You understand? It's, it's a gift that just comes in quick and by the time you leave the premises of wherever the, uh, the program is going, the gift is gone. You understand? It's an instant power that just came in. Quick and quick and you just grab it quick. You understand? That is why even when worship is going on, me, I don't look at anybody. So I just close my eyes because it's not about I am in the presence of the Lord and you don't know when the touch is going to come. You understand? That is why, you know, I can't understand how people come to church and chewing chingon. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. ah. Can you go to the White House and be chewing chingon? Yeah? And then they, they talk. They, yeah, 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 yeah. Ah. You are in the presence of the Lord. When anywhere you go to, where the children of God are gathered, once you get there, turn everything off. Because when they start worshipping, you are saying, when, when the voice started going, oh Lord, we bless you, angels are coming down. And when they are coming down, your heart must be tuned 360 degrees. You are not there to socialize for that particular time. When the service is over, you can socialize and talk. You understand? You know, if somebody is talking to you during service, tell them, get behind me, Satan. Because the power comes in an instant. It's not something that you understand what I'm trying to say this morning. It's not some. That is why many people are in the church and they don't grow. The reason why you don't grow is that because the heart is not tuned. You know, when the word of God is being read, you know, if we say open to Matthew, whatever, whatever. Do you know that a spirit can come from that word and hit you? So when you are in the house of the Lord, block everything out. Focus on Jesus. It's only for two hours or whatever you are in that place. Block everything out 
as soon as you go out, you can do everything. Because that is how the Lord will touch you. How do power come on people? How do power come? Power comes when your heart is released. You understand? It's, look, you can go to the highest mountain. The reason why people go to mountain, I me mean, too, so I love to go to mountain, is because it's quiet. You understand? There is no distraction. You just focus. You understand? But it's not because the mountain possesses some powers. No. It's because you are focused. So when you are in the house of the Lord, your main thing is focus, focus, focus. From the time they started singing to the time the Bible is read to the time whatever, whatever, because you are in the arena of God, God can just touch you instantly. And that is how people get gifts. There is no magic to spiritual growth more than that. You can only get it in the house of the Lord. And the Lord is releasing it because the spirit is moving. The only thing is that you have to tune your heart to grab it. You understand? And that is how you develop as a Christian. That is how you develop when you tune your heart. And let me tell you what happened. When the word is being read and a, 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 you know, a scripture is being read, guess what? If you open your heart and you open yourself, that spirit will deposit that scripture into your heart. So that even when you are sleeping, an attack is coming. Something, that word will just come out. Or you don't even know that you know some scripture. When somebody is reading it, you will just follow. Where do you think that came from? It's the spirit. The spirit has stored it in you. So the more you focus yourself on the Lord, the more spiritual growth that you will get. This year, may everybody grow hundredfold in Jesus' name. Because a powerless Christian is a stupid Christian. You understand? You are in the house of God. Where are you supposed to get power? And some people, because they don't feel there is power in the house of God, they go to some juju. And then they die before their time. You understand what I'm saying? But look, the power of God has been the same from beginning to now to forever. And the only way you can get it is in the house of God. There is no magic about it. It's how you open your heart. The Lord said, according to your faith, according to your faith, it will be done unto you. Like today now, we are going to be talking about healing. When we start praying, when you need healing, you will focus your mind. Not look at anybody. Lord, this is what your word says. I must get it. I must. You understand? If there is, because God is not partial. I am, I must, Lord. Look, when, when Jacob when was wrestling with the Lord, he said, I will not let you go. When, and that is how you get the gift of vision. When you are determined in your heart, I am in the house of God today, Lord. I did not come to see Pastor Buki. I did not come to see anybody. I came to see you. And I am not leaving until you give me something. When you have that type of determination in your heart, and your heart is not, you, you understand, your heart is clicked to the Lord like that, it will come. It will come. You understand? It will come and you will grab it. So you need that gift of faith. You understand? When, and that can only happen to you in the house of the Lord. Amen? So that is that one. Now we want to go into the gift of healing. Amen? The gift of healing. Amen? The gift of healing. In Mark chapter 16 verse 17, the word of the Lord said, They shall lay hand on the sick, and the sick shall recover. Amen? He said, those who believe in my name. Believers shall lay hand on the sick. Your child is sick. There are some sickness that if you take to the doctor, the child will die before you get there. As a believer, if this gift, your heart is tuned and a little bit of it is processed in your life, even as you are here today, there are times that even you yourself are sick and you pray. And then miraculously something happens, you get ill. So the Lord has already given it to you. You just need to develop it. You understand what I'm saying? But you need the fullness of that gift. Because emergency can happen at any time. And demons, it's not every sickness or disease that is from 
from God of that just happened naturally. It might be a demon, a more demonic influence. But if you have the fullness of this gift, first you have to, you know, you can use the gift in your own home, on your children. You understand what I'm saying? You know, do you understand what I'm saying as believers? These are the things that make us to be believers in Jesus Christ. We are different from the people of the world. You understand? Because the power of God dwells in us. His spirit dwells in us. We are not just a common people. We are people of power. So the gift of healing in that Mark, in that Mark chapter 16 verse 17 he said this sign shall follow those who believe in my name. They shall drink deadly poison and it will not harm them. Let me give you a trick. How many people here just raise up your hand if you have ever eaten in your dream before? Mm-hmm. Is a, is a deposit of Satan. Satan wants to destroy something in your life. That is why he will bring food. You understand? It's a poison. Let me tell you when you wake up as a believer. When you wake up, please open to that Mark chapter 16 verse 17 because I want you to be using it. Now I want you to mark that in your Bible. Amen? If you wake up in the morning, and they gave you a sexual dream. Amen. They came to you to have sexual intercourse in dream. Or they give you deadly poison. All I, I want you to just take. Even if it's a glass of water. Or a communion. Just go take a juice or water. And a small bread. Lay it before yourself. Read this scripture in it. And said, As a believer in Jesus Christ. Ali Arabaka. The word of the Lord says. If I drink deadly poison, it will not harm me at all. You that demonic caterers that came and gave me food, it cannot harm me because I carry upon myself the mark of the Lord Jesus Christ. No power, no deposit of evil can stay inside this body because this is where Jesus Christ is dwelling. And then you pray. And then you said, I cast you out. I remove you out of my body. You must come out. And then pray. You understand? Whatever food, if it's sex, whatever it is, as the blood of Jesus, pray over the flesh, uh, over the bread, and over the drink. So ask it to be turned to the flesh of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. And as you partake it, I command that thing to flush out. It will come out. Because the scriptures cannot be broken. The power of God is in the world. That is the, that is the bottom line. There is no other power anywhere. The power is in the word of the Lord. Amen? So you declare that word. You claim healing. If something you are sick before you start running to the doctors, you said the power of the word of the Lord said lay hands on the sick and they will get well. Your children are sick, lay hands upon them. Before you start laying hands on outsider, ask the Lord. Amen. Point on the healing side. Because I am an example of that. When I first become a believer, my prayer partner, we, all, we both know that he has a lot of spiritual problem. You know, they were following him everywhere. And, um, you know, he was sick. The wife called me. This man was sick. And I went there. And... Um, I said, what happened? He said, he's just vomiting blood. You know, because where he was sleeping, somebody came and was trying to stuff yam into his throat. And he was trying to call Jesus. The more he tried to call Jesus, the more they poured yam into his throat. And finally, he was, Aah! and then where the wife was walking, the Holy Spirit said to the wife, leave your job now, go home. She don't know why. Two times she heard the voice, and she said to the, to the boss, Please, I need to rush home. I think maybe something is wrong. I don't know. I just have a feeling. So she ran home, and when she got home, she just saw the husband where he was struggling on the sofa there, and then just grabbed and started praying, and then the man, you know, just went, ah! and then blood just started flowing out of his mouth. So when she said that to me, I said, let me go there. I was a new believer. You know, I don't know nothing. I mean, <laughs> I, because I speak in tongue, I thought that is all there is to it. So I just told the guy, I cast out you that demon in the name of Jesus. And the demon just looked at me like, who is this one? <laughs> 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 
Well, the devil just hit me with one slap like this. I fell down. The man was on the floor. Me too, I fell down. Everything that happens to the man copy me instantly. They have to carry me inside the car. I can't even walk. <laughs> Amen. So before you lay hands on people, Amen. <laughs> Before you lay hands on people, make sure the Lord is the one who told you to. At least on your own family member, you have territory. But before you start being an evangelist of a supernatural cast out devil, <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you better ask the Lord. Amen. Glory be to God. <laughs> so on the healing part, Amen. So, like I said, the Lord has given us that authority, amen, as a believer. Amen? You can lay hands on your people in your family and they can get well. You can lay hands on yourself. In the book of James, it said, the elders of the church can lay hands on you and you can get well. Amen? Now, in Matthew chapter 8, verse 3, when the gift of healing, we are talking about the gift of healing. The gift of healing, please open your Bible there, Matthew chapter 8, verse 3, can be an immediate healing. Hallelujah. In this part, Jesus Christ lay his hand and touched a leprosy man, a man with leprosy. And the Bible said, immediately his leprosy was cured. Amen. Which means that when you pray for healing, or you pray for somebody for healing, they can, if it's the Lord's will, they can be healed immediately. You understand? The gift is God's power manifesting through a person. It is not, there is not a human being who can say, I am a healer. No. It is God, the Spirit of God, manifesting himself through a vessel. And that power can heal somebody immediately. Amen? Hallelujah. So we can pray for healing today and some people can just get healed just like that. Amen? Hallelujah. But also, the gift can also work gradually. Healing can be gradual. Now open your Bible to Mark chapter 8 verse 23. Mark 8 23. Mark 8.23, Mark, not Amos, Mark. <laughs> Mark chapter 8, verse 23. Mark 8.23, are we there? And in this situation, Jesus took the blind man. He led, he led him out of town, and when he, he split into his eyes, the, you know, to heal him. He took his saliva, prayer, spirit, and pray on him. And then he asked the blind man, what do you see? The blind man said, I see human being like tree. Amen? He said, I see human being like tree. Then Jesus had to lay hands upon him again and pray on him for the second time. Hallelujah. And when he, he lay hands on him a second time, then he made him to look up. And then he asked him, what do you see? Then the man recovered completely. So healing can be partial. You understand? To, you know, when you pray for healing and you are asking the Lord, please heal me, you don't stop. You understand? You don't stop until the Lord heals you. I think that's the mistake most people make. They just want immediate healing. I didn't heal. And you see, confession goes with healing. Amen? If we are praying for healing, and we said, those who are sick, come out. And then, you know, your leg was doing like this. And then we pray, your leg was still doing like this. You understand? That is not saying the Lord have not touched you. But when you just go and sit down and you say, I didn't even get healed. That's it. You already confessed it. The demons will say, yes, you didn't get healed. You understand what I'm saying? And that is why many people lose their healing. Even when the Lord has touched you and you get home and you are, the demons come and say, you know you are not healed. And you suck into that, you will never get healed. But you, you continue saying to yourself, by your stripe I am healed. By your stripe I am healed. 
uh, Dr. Cho, there is a woman who had cancer of the throat. And he said the woman came and he prayed for the woman. And the woman came back and said, I didn't get healed. And then he, he said he's an older woman. The woman came the third time, I didn't get healed. And then the woman asked him, Pastor, you need to go and get more power. <laughs> he said, even you yourself, you are sicko. So you need to go get more power because I didn't get healed. Then he said to the woman, okay, since you didn't get healed, this is what we are going to do. Go to the prayer mountain and go and write in 1,000 places, by his stripe I am healed. By his stripe I am healed. Then by, when you finish writing it, then come back. Then by the time the woman came back, I'm healed! <laughs> now because she released her faith into the writing, the Lord has already touched. She just needs something. You understand? But you don't have to go that far. If you believe in your heart, all things are possible. You understand what I'm saying? If you say to yourself, let me tell you, um, two weeks ago we were in Lowell, and a lady was standing in the back, and the Lord was telling me, look around her. There is some things in there, in the woman area. And that is our first time. Of coming. So I was reluctant. I'm like, ah, how am I going to, you know, she don't know me. You know, I'm going to be telling her there is something there. And the Lord said he's healing it. Ah. But when the Holy Spirit will not allow me to rest, I summon the courage. I went, I lay my hands. I'm not the one doing it. The Lord just touched her. And then her body shook a little bit. And I said, the Lord said there is something there. The Lord is healing you, blah, blah, blah. And I left. The following day, she came to the store. She said, Pastor, I'm coming from the doctor. I said, are you okay? I didn't even remember what happened. She said, I'm completely healed. Just casual like that. I said, I said what happened? Then she said to me, when you came to me and you touched me, she said, I have this problem, I have that problem. He said, but when you touch. He said, the Holy Spirit, I've never shaken her before. Even when they are laying hands on people, she just stand there. She said, but today she felt it. And she said, it's like fire just went through that place. She said, so this morning when she woke up, she said she's going to go to the doctor so that they can check her. And they said, it's the thing is gone. Just like that. Because that is the Lord. It's an it's a instant thing. You understand what I'm saying? It's not a... It's not a um, you know, it's not something planned. Do you understand? It's the Lord doing the work himself. And the Lord has seen her. You understand? I, I'm just like, oh, praise the Lord. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that is the type of God we are serving. He is a God who has the power. So, Nurubu, so Jesus can do it gradually. You understand? That woman known is immediately. But Jesus can do it, you understand, gradually. He can, he can let you see like three at first, and then, you know, he can also go into a different level. Amen? So, when we are still talking about the gift of healing, and now, in Mark chapter 8, verse 8, hallelujah. <laughs> Sorry, Matthew chapter 8, verse 8. Matthew chapter 8, verse 8. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 8, a centurion came to Jesus and he said to the Lord, My servant is sick. Amen. My servant is sick. And Jesus is, was about to go there and the man said, No, 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 no. You don't need to come to my house. Just speak the word. I myself am an, an, uh, I'm an army officer. You understand? If I, you know, if I said to uh, this of my, of my captain or major or whatever, do this, they will go and do it. I know, like Ed Augustine used to be in the military. When the general said, everybody march forward, nobody is going to look back. Even the general is not there. You understand what I'm saying? And this is in the physical. And immediately Jesus spoke because the man released his faith. And Jesus spoke, and he, he, Jesus, that very hour, that very hour, that very hour, the spoken word of Jesus Christ, that your servant is healed, 
went to heal that man. So that spoken word is right here with us today. We have the spoken word today. If you believe, you understand, if you believe all things are possible, the spoken word of Jesus is here today. Amen. Jesus did not see the servant. He just spoke. If you just read the word of God today and believe and speak that word, and as we are in this service this morning, and you just speak according to the word of the Lord, and you said in, Ma in Matthew chapter 8 verse 8, Jesus spoke concerning the centurion. I speak in the name of Jesus Christ today that the healing, that the stripe, by the stripe of Jesus I am healed. My son is healed wherever he is. My daughter is healed wherever he is. And you say that, it will be done. In Jesus' name. Amen. That is part of being a believer. Amen. There is no shortcut. It's all about the word of God. It's all about, about the word, the word, the word, the word, the word. Look, prophecy we cease, but the word can never fail. Can, look, a prophet, the best of the prophet can give, you know, a, prof, a wrong prophecy. You understand what I'm saying? The enemy can cloud the mind of a prophet, but the word of the Lord can never be changed. It stands firm forever. It is the thing that can never change, ever, ever, ever. That is why your trust must not be in a man. It must be in the word of God. Amen. So when you declare the word, it will be established immediately. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are still at the gift of healing. Hallelujah. The other thing that brings healing is the presence of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, open that to... When, when Jesus is in a place and he's walking, and he's walking, you understand? And he's walking. And we are in service as we are today. You understand? And we are calling his name. And we are calling the Holy Spirit. The presence of Jesus is there. Anything can happen. You understand? We have invited him. So when you invite him, anything can happen. He can bring healing. Whichever way he wants. Amen. The other part that the Bible spoke about on healing is in James chapter 5 verse 14. When the leaders of the church, in James chapter 5 verse 14, the book of James chapter 5 verse 14, James 5.14. In James chapter 5, verse 14, he spoke about when anointing oil is poured on a person, on a sick person, when oil is poured upon that person, amen? When oil is poured upon them, they will get healed, amen? In the house of the Lord, when we are doing anointing service, amen, and we are praying for the sick, amen? The person will get healed. Amen. Now, the second, the third gift that we are talking about is the gift of miracles. What is miracle? What is the gift of miracle? The gift of miracle is a performance, it is something supernatural. Amen. Something supernatural. Something that is beyond explanation. Amen. Like I said, you can use deliverance, for example. Somebody that is standing, that thinks everything is okay, and all of a sudden, the power of God comes in, and they start, the spirit starts acting. That is miracle. You understand? That is a gift of miracle. You understand? Because how did that happen? How it can, it's, it's something supernatural. Something supernatural. That is the, the gift of miracle. Something extraordinary. When a dead, somebody that is dead is suddenly raised up. Glory to God. The gift of miracle is when extraordinary things happen to you. Some, and I know all of you here have experienced miracle before. All you need is more. You need the more. Imagine if God gave you the gift of miracle. That means miracle will follow you everywhere you go. You understand what I'm saying? Miracle. When Sarah, who's dead, whom was dead, got pregnant and delivered a child, that is a miracle. You understand? Say, I am a miracle that is about to happen. Yes. You see this year? When people that used to know you, when they don't know you again, 
That means miracle has happened. Amen. That means miracle has happened to you. Amen. That means that what you don't expect has happened to you. I want to give you a, a, an example of a miracle that we all need. But there is a miracle that was recorded in John chapter 5. John chapter 5. John chapter 5, verse 6 to 8. John 5, 6 to 8. Can somebody read that? John 5, 6 to 8. John chapter 5, verse 6 to 8. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I'm coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Right, Take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well. Amen. Took up his bed and walked. Amen. This was a man that has been in that position for 38 years. So it doesn't matter how long you have been having a problem. What matters is that when Jesus walking, that problem will disappear. Amen. Now, look at John chapter 9. This is where I want to show you something that when miracle happened to you, people that used to know you, they will not know you again. Amen? In Mark, uh, sorry, in John chapter 9, John chapter 9, verse 1 to 7. 1 to 7. Mm -hmm. John chapter 9, verse 1 to 7. Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. I must work the works of him who sent me, while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said these things, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated scent. So he went and washed and came back seen. Amen. Go on, go on. Okay. Therefore the neighbors... And those who previously had seen that he was blind said, Is not this he who sat and begged? Some said, This he. Others said, He is like him. He said, I am he. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at this man that has been born blind. It doesn't matter where you are coming from. You might have been carrying the problem like that man at the pool for 38 years or even from birth. It doesn't matter how much poverty, disgrace and shame has been in your family. It doesn't matter you live in a hut. It doesn't matter how difficult and problematic your problem have become. The very day that Jesus Christ of Nazareth will appear to you, that day everything will disappear. Yes. Because that is exactly what happened to this man. The people that used to know him before, after Jesus asked him, go and wash, and he washed, they were saying, is it him? That will be your portion in Jesus' name. Yeah. People will be asking, is this you? And they will be arguing, no, other will say, he only looked like him. Amen. He only looked like him. Others said, no, 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 no. He himself is saying, it is me. Let me tell you, prosperity is good. If tomorrow, this year, before the end of this year, the Lord miraculously bless you and multiply you, Amen. and you have three, five million dollars in the bank, Amen. definitely your life will change. Yes. There is no reason why your life should not change. Because those whose life have changed are not different than you. Yes. 
You understand what I'm saying? And when your life changed, and the people that used to know you before, you understand, they will be saying, I just saw, ah, is that not sister so, 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 so in the Rolls Royce? If you get it, give me a ride, though. Amen. Hallelujah. I remember the first time I entered Rolls Royce. I said, money is good, though. Even the seat cushion is like shh. Uh, you will not feel the bumps on the road. You won't feel it. Why do you think married couple they go and rent limo? They want to start in a new life. Amen. There is nothing bad about the blessing. God bless his own people. Amen. But the key thing is that when miracle happens in your life. When God's miracle happens in your life, it changes your life drastically. You understand that people that used to know you will be arguing. It's not you. It only looks like you. You understand? Because when miracle comes, everything will change. Even your skin will change. You understand? Your sleep will change. Worry will be gone. You understand? I, I don't necessarily mean it's all money, money, money. You understand? If you have sickness in your body and the Lord took away the sickness, you understand? It's worth more than money. You understand what I'm saying? Miracle of God is not money, money. You cannot buy miracle. You understand what I'm saying? You have a child that is, is, is brain dead. He can't do well in school. All of a sudden, the child is getting A, 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 A. You understand what I'm saying? That is in a miracle by itself. Miracle comes in to change our life for good. Amen. So we need a miracle. We are a miracle that is about to happen. We need, truly, truly need the miracle of God in our lives. Amen. And all these gifts are available for everyone. Amen. I want to run a scripture through for you that I want you to write down because when you are Praying for gifts is not just when we come to service and you pray for 30 minutes and you go home. This is the power of God. This is something that is precious. You got to seek it. The Bible said we should be eager, eager, eager for spiritual gifts. Let me give you, I'll give you that scripture and I will give you nine scriptures that Apostle Paul got the nine gifts. He got the nine gifts from the Lord. He was operating in those nine gifts. So when you write these nine gifts down, hallelujah, when you write this nine gift that Apostle Paul, we are talking about the nine gift of the Lord. So you want, <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. So the Lord gives all these gifts out to everybody. So God cannot just give you one. When he gives Apostle Paul the old nine. Amen. So we also need all the nine. At least you can start praying for him. We've already explained the gifts. You understand what they are, how they operate. But now you can talk to the Lord how he gave the nine to Apostle Paul. Okay, number one. These are the nine, the nine, the nine gifts that the, you can know that Apostle Paul, God gave him the nine. So you write the scriptures down and then you can take it to the Lord. Amen. And said, if you can give one man nine, Lord, I want my own. Hallelujah. Now, God gave Saul the nine gift. In, in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, the Bible tells us he was operating in the gift of wisdom. Hallelujah. You can write it down. That is number one. And then in Acts chapter, did you get it? Oh, sorry. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. That the Lord gave the gift of wisdom to Apostle Paul. And you can also ask the Lord to give you the same gift of wisdom. He gave it to Apostle Paul. Amen. And you also want that gift. Amen. That's number one. Do we have it? You write it down. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Now, the gift of knowledge in Acts chapter 13, verse 10 to 11. That's number two, knowledge. That Apostle Paul also operates in the gift of knowledge. Acts chapter 13, verse 10 to 13. 
when he spoke the word of knowledge. Amen. You see, Elima, who was trying to disturb him, he spoke the word of knowledge and he said, from now you go blind. Instantly he went blind. Who said you can't do that? Some stupid person in your village or in your family, they start troubling you. If you have the gift, the word, the word of knowledge, you understand? You will speak with authority and say, this is what will happen. It will happen. You understand? It will happen. Hallelujah. Amen. It will happen. Amen. Some witchcraft powers, they are destroying you, disturbing your life, disturbing your family. You ask the Lord for the word of knowledge and you speak it against them. He's more powerful than any cause. It will stick. Amen. So the Lord gave that gift, the, the word of knowledge, he gave it to Apostle Paul. So you can pray for that. Amen. In Acts chapter 16, verse 16 to 18, the Lord also gave the discerning of spirit. The discerning of spirit. In Acts chapter 16, verse 16 to 18. And that is when a saved girl was following Paul everywhere. And Paul said, you know, he was able to detect, even though she was selling the truth, I spoke about that last week, but the spirit that she was using was fortune telling. You understand? He was not the spirit of the Lord. No, no, it was spirit of divination. So that when you have that gift, if you go somewhere and somebody is talking, they are using the name of God and they are not spirit filled, your spirit will say, no, that's not me. You understand? That is not me. And God also gave that gift to Paul. Amen. This discerning of spirit. Hallelujah. In, in uh, the gift of tongue, God also gave him the gift of tongue. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 18. 1 Corinthians 14, 18. He said, so Paul himself said, I spoke in tongue more than anyone. So just speaking in one tongue, you must have diversity of tongues, different, different tongues to speak to different, to angels, to the throne of grace, tongue to worship, tongue to cast out demons. There are different, different types of tongues. You understand what I'm saying? So the Lord also gave him that gift, the gift of diversity of tongues. Then in, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 13, hallelujah, the gift of interpretation of tongue, he also operates in that. That is why he said that those who speak in tongue, they must pray to have interpretation. Amen? Do you get that? Huh? Where, where did you stop? Number five? 14, 13. 14, 13. No, I said 14. 14, 13. 14, 18. And the second one is 14, 13. Are we getting it? Yeah? Amen. Okay, so everybody got it? So you got the wisdom, knowledge, the signing of spirit, tongue, and interpretation of tongue, right? Now, Apostle Paul was also given the gift of prophecy. Amen? Prophecy. And this is in Acts chapter 15, verse 32. And Acts chapter 19, verse 6. Acts 19, verse 6. And Acts chapter 15, verse 32. In Acts chapter 15, verse 32, when Silas and uh, Judas, who themselves were prophets, they walk with Apostle Paul. Hallelujah. And then in Acts chapter 19, verse 6, when people speak in tongue, when Paul lay his hand on people, they speak in tongue and they also prophesy because he was imparting what is in him. You can only give out what you have. Amen. So he was also imparting that gift of prophecy on people. Amen. Do you get it? Hallelujah. Now, the gift of faith in Acts chapter 14, verse 8 to 10. Acts chapter 14, verse 8 to 10. When a crippled man had faith to be healed, as soon as Paul called out for him. He was healed immediately. The Lord used him. He, 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 the man released his faith. And as soon as the man released his faith, then he was healed immediately. 
Amen. That is the gift of faith. Then in healing, also in healing number 8, in Acts chapter 19 verse 12, number 8. Number 7 is Acts 14, 8 to 10. And, no, sorry. No, that's number seven. Number eight is Acts 19. Uh, now, number eight, number, number eight is Acts chapter 19, verse 12. When handkerchief were lay on Paul's body, just handkerchief from him were lay on the sick, they got healed immediately. Amen? Hallelujah. And then, gift number nine, the gift of miracle. You all also operate in the gift of miracle. In Acts chapter 19, verse 11, God did extraordinary miracles through him. Amen. This is one man. One man, nine gift. Amen. So you got to wrestle with the Lord. Amen. Don't settle for anything less. Are you with me? Don't settle for just I speak in tongues. If God can give somebody nine, he definitely can give you four. Amen? Don't just say, I, look, Lord, I just want power. Just give me healing. No. He's the one that decides what he will give you. Amen? At, at the right time, at the right time, God will give you what you, he thinks that you need. Amen? Okay, you said, oh, I just need the gift of healing, but you don't want to go out and preach. Who are you going to be healing? By yourself? It's not for decoration. The gift is to edify the church. Is to build up the kingdom of God. Amen. But these are the gifts that God gives somebody. One single man. So if God gives him nine, then you have to, that is why I took time to look at all these scriptures to give you, to pray to the Lord, that Lord Almighty, you can, if you can do this for one person, then what about me? Give me some of these gifts too. And the Lord will answer. He said, if our children ask us for bread, we don't give them snake. How much more? Those who ask him for the gift of the Holy Spirit. He will generously give it to us. Amen. So ask, because this is how you can build up as a Christian, as a believer. You understand? We cannot just be coming to church and be sitting down. There is more to it than that. If, look, if, 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 if all that we just do is, oh, come to church, you know, sit down, and we go home. What has changed? Nothing has changed. It's the power that changed our life. It's the power of God that changed our life. It is the spirit in us that continues to build up and make us to be a different person. You understand? You cannot just be coming to church and be sitting down. God, you have to allow God to use you. If God don't use you, okay, look at it this way now. In this church now, this morning, if I'm the only one that God is using, then if God said tomorrow, Buki, it's time for you, me to take you home, does that mean the church will die? The church can never die because it's the house of the Lord. There is, look, if I misbehave, the Lord will push me out there and replace me with another person. That's how it works. You understand? But the Lord needs everybody to play their part. There is a part in the kingdom for everybody. Being a Christian does not mean just come to church and sit down. Being a Christian means that I am serving all of the Christians. Okay, let's look at it this way. Let's look at it this way. Jesus picked how many disciples? After the 12, how many people does he have again? Anybody knows? In the Luke, in the Luke, in the Luke chapter, I believe it's chapter 12. Chapter 2, yes. How many people? 72. You can see the 72 returned with joy. And they said we are casting out demons. And they were rejoicing. You understand? After the 72, how many again? 500. Amen. Yeah, you've not been reading your Bible. Mm -hmm. We know those who have been reading. Amen? Start reading your Bible. Amen? So, there is Jesus, the at 12, right? Look at it this way now. Everybody look at it this way. Jesus at 12, 72, after 72, 500. What is the total of that? 500 and what? 
584 people. Okay. If those 584 people have sat down and they said, hey, Jesus is good, though. Jesus has power. And they just sat down and they did nothing. What will have happened? Maybe in another 50, 60 years, Christianity will have died. But because those 500 people, they did something. They started talking about Jesus. When they started talking about Jesus, guess what follow? Power. Power follows them. You understand what I'm saying? Power follows them. And then, from them, that power transferred to another person. And that is how Christianity is spreading throughout the world. Amen. So if you don't do your part, one day you are going to meet Jesus eyeball to eyeball. And he's going to ask you, what did you do for me? I went to church. Pastor Buki will not be there. If you mention Pastor Buki, they will say, who is that? Because I will go and face my own judgments. You understand? Everybody is one by one. Amen? Even twins, they don't come out of their mother's womb with two heads. They come one by one. Amen? Hallelujah. So, you need this power. Amen? As a believer, you need the power because if power is not operating in you, how will your children believe? Huh? If your own children cannot believe your faith, how will their children believe? Amen? So, you need power. You need miracles. You need your children to say, you know, one time, my mommy and daddy used to be broke. But when Jesus came in, everything changed for us. And they will be telling their children, you know, our life never used to be like this. So we used to suffer. You understand? But look at us today. Amen. You see, one thing I learned from my parents was my father, oh Lord, may you so rest in peace. That man can cane somebody, a dead person will jump up. He used to buy a bundle of cane in bundles because he has seven children. And my father would quote the scripture in the morning. Out of the, out of the children is madness. He said, yeah, and, the, and the Bible said that I shall cane you. If I don't cane you, that means I'm going against the word of God. And my father will use that scripture before he cane you. So he will say, I am only the servant of God. I'm doing what God has asked me to do to you. <laughs> Amen. But you see, one thing I learned from him, and what does he beat us for? Is about the Bible. You have to wake up at five o'clock. Which kid wants to wake up at five in the morning to pray? Nobody wants to wake up at five in the morning to pray. And my father will wake you up with a cane on the bed for you to get up to pray. And then one day I asked my mom, I said, My daddy is so fanatic. Why is it that everything, Bible, 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 we must go to service three times a week. On Saturday, it was a Jehovah Witness. You have to go outside. Rain or shine, you're going to preach. Even three years old, you must go out and preach. We all have our Bible, uh, our watchtower bag. Everybody in my house have a watchtower bag. You must go out and preach. Either you like it or not. There is no, uh, I don't feel like it's there. It is compulsory. And you must know the scripture by your memory. If you... Because they tell you to go and preach. If, and my father is standing there and they say, eh, eh, preach. Four year old. And you say, eh, we are Jehovah's Witness. We are here this morning to talk. Mm -hmm. Once you leave there, my father will say, you didn't quote that scripture well. Oh. <laughs> as little as we are. But I didn't know that it was sowing something inside of us. You understand? And I ask, I say, but mommy, why is that so hard? It's so tough. He's such a tough man. My mother said, because you don't know, in two years we lost four children and we have none. That she had the first child who was four years old, the second one was, I know, the, one, the oldest one was six years old, the next one was four years old, and she had twins, brand new baby, and they all died within one year. And she said, so they have nothing except to turn to the Lord. And the next child that we have after that was five years. She said, so your father has nobody else to turn to except to the Lord. And he said, now, when the children started coming, they started coming. My father had to tell my mom, 
If you get pregnant again, I will run away from you. Uh -huh. You understand? I will run away from you. And when the Lord answered, my mother used to tell me, she was pregnant twins, three times. That is how God. Then she said to me, because that was the miracle that God did for them. So they promised God, if we have children, they must have God. So that is why my father will kill us. You must have God. You have no choice. You may call it an abuse, but I call it a blessing now. Amen. You must have God because that thing, the seed is still in me till today. Amen. So the key thing is that if you don't operate in gift, what are your children learning from you? If they don't see the miracle of God in your life, they don't see power of God in your life, when you are old, what are you going to use to hold them? Is the word of God that can hold. So we need this power. Please pray. Amen? Pray. Talk to the Lord so that you can start operating in power. Can we rise up on our feet this morning?